Hello. Welcome back to Seen by Few. Mm. With Nick. Lance. And um, so this this week, or I guess this day, mm. we're, we're doing a special holiday edition. And I don't know why I'm doing it, because like, I don't smoke anything. But we're doing a 420 episode. And we're doing that, like, Lance is like, hey, let's do a 420 episode. And he gave me two options, and I like this option better than the other one. So we so we had a, we had a suggestion, which was how high. Yeah. Um, and we're going to do that one soon for Net, for Nettie. Um, but then there was half baked came up as, as a plausibility and I'm like, okay, we could, we, I, I like that movie. We could do that movie. And then, and then, and then, um, he suggested like, we could do grandma's boy instead. I'm like, yeah, let's do grandma's boy. Well, it's just, yeah, it's, it's very relevant. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going with this one for 420 and then we'd like to hear some more suggestions from y'all for next 420. Cause we're trying to get into some of the obscure holidays as well. Um, Which apparently it's a holiday new to me. I know 420 is a joke, but. It's you know technically as, as as something that I would actually celebrate. Well, technically, we could do a four twenty one uh, movie, which would be like National Drug Test Day. <laughs> so, uh, th- I guess that's the joke that usually follows that one. But no, mm-hmm. Grandma's Boy was one we had to talk about, and mm-hmm. I don't want to I don't want to say too much uh, at the moment because we want to get to our ratings. Because we're going to give our ratings, and then we're going to start talking about the movie in depth. Which so, I mean, can you spoil a comedy? I mean, I guess you can, but. The plot of this movie is very um, thin. It's just a bunch. It's a bunch mm. of jokes, and there's and you got kind of the overarching story. Yeah, it's kind of it, there's there's layers. This movie is definitely a, an onion. It's a very it's a very thin onion, but it's <laughs> definitely it's definitely an onion. Once you pull back one layer, and then pull back the other layer, and then you're done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's 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 stoner humor for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Um, but man, it's and such a good movie. It's a good movie. It's well. I'm not gonna. I don't want to. Let's go ahead and do let's, our ratings. Let's, let's do our rating. Yeah. So, um, do you want me to start with my rating? Yes. Um, so this is a movie that my. Let's make sure you make sure you're locked in. I'm locked this in. This is a movie that um my brother bought and kind of showed to me. So it is a movie that I watched with Mike, mm. and therefore, it's tied emotionally with me watching it with my brother, mm. who has since passed. So it's got a bit more of a special place in my heart. With you saying that, can I change my number? Nope. <laughs> um, but still, I would only give it about, I'd give it about a seven, just because there's a lot. There, there, there's a lot in the movie that uh, it comes back to, and maybe if it, if I hadn't watched it with my brother, maybe it wouldn't have been like because I mean, seven is special to me. I mean, mm. special, seven's a good movie. Oh yeah, no. And there's just a lot in this movie that we would quote back and forth to each other, especially with Nick Swartzen. Mm. We watched some of his special specials, especially like on the on Comedy Central when he was hanging out with his grandmother, and. Um, like he loved hanging out with his grandma because uh, whenever she needed something, he always just seemed so strong because he was she was like an eighty something year old woman. He was like Nicholas, could you hand me that gallon of milk over there? And he's like, you mean this gallon of milk? She's like Nicholas, you're the strongest boy in the world. And so Mike would just quote that to me sometimes because you know I'm Nicholas, and whenever I would just do something, he's like Nicholas. <laughs> You're the strongest boy in the world. That's awesome. I, I don't think I've seen that stand up. That's awesome. It's, it's good shit. Huh. So I like Nick Swarson. And, uh, he's and hilarious. And back to him is, is nice. And he plays a... He, he's like the third lead in this movie. I don't know if like where you put him next to... Um, like so, um, what's that actress? Linda? What was her? Linda Samantha. Car- Samantha was yeah, that, Samantha. Uh, played by Linda Cardellini, who and, was Velma. Yes. And I'm not sure if you would put maybe um, Alex and Grandma as like the two leads. And maybe like... Nicholas and Samantha is kind of like the secondary leads, or if you consider them all leads, maybe. I don't know. I mean, Alex is the lead. Yes, he's definitely the lead. And then Linda Cardellini and... I say Linda Cardellini and JP are the follow. They're ones that follow after that. See, I would, I would say that Nick Swartzen is bigger than JP. Yeah, no. You know what? You're right. You're right. Because JP is kind of the foil, and he's in it a, a, a decent amount. But for, for a lot of it, they kind of... He's not there at the party and stuff like that. He's just kind of... They cut back to him when he's just being weird. I mean, hell, Dante's like... More of a about equal or slightly, maybe, slightly higher, maybe slightly higher than than JP yeah. in, in terms of screen time, maybe. All right, so if I was to give this movie a number, okay. I mean, um, what did I what did I guess? Okay. So I'll go ahead and say it's my favorite of the Happy Madison movies. That's not that hard, honestly. Well, I mean, the only other Happy Madison movie that's like way up there with me was Be Happy Gilmore. Like I did not like Billy Madison. That was not a movie that I liked very much. It's I I like I, I liked Mr. Deeds better. Okay. Than, but if I was to give this movie a number, I would say an eight. Okay, that's close. Okay, yeah. 
I mean, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I figured it would be one that you that you enjoy enough. Well, it's talk about a quotable movie. It's so fucking quotable. Like I come, I say quotes from this movie all the fucking time. Come on, Laura, my dick's lost in the jungle, and you gotta find it. <laughs> what do we got going on back here? Ooh. I just, sometimes I just like to say, say like, um, you know, I'm gonna get robot legs. It's a risky operation, but it's totally worth it. <laughs> Are you afraid of my music? Well, you wouldn't be if you, if had, you had robot, robot ears. ears. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. That's so fucking stupid, all of it. It, it is, it, but like it's it's probably, in my opinion, it's it's the best movie that, that Adam Sandler, I guess, bankrolled that yeah. does not have him in it. Yeah, but I, I'm like Adam Sandler's okay. I like Adam Sandler better when he's not in movies. Mm. <laughs> I saw Spanglish, which I think was like his first serious role movie, mm-hmm. and oh. it's and it's good. But it's like, it's a feels movie. I think the movie I like him the best in is probably Fifty First Dates. Oh man, that's one of Amber's favorite movies of all time. It's, it's pretty good. I like that one. Uh, it's it's definitely a good one. Um, he's in a movie now called Uncut Gems. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be like a really serious, like very heavy movie. I've not seen it yet, but I've heard really, really good things about it. Um, so I guess he's like actually spreading his wings a little bit. Hopefully. Trying to... uh, his his formula is tired. <laughs> you gotta load it. I, 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 I it's, it's still that's still good stuff. Don't get me wrong, but it, it you're right. It is it's, it it's is tired. It's wearing a little thin, um, but still it wore, it wore thin a while ago, and he kept doing it. Well, he's doing the he's doing the Kevin Smith thing now, isn't he? Like you know, he was doing like really funny movies back in the day, and, and now he's just doing movies with his friends. Yeah, and now it's like, where do you guys want to go? Hawaii. Fucking, let's do it. Let's, let's do go, a movie in Hawaii. Let's go to Hawaii. And, let's and then just, you get a company to pay you to go to Hawaii and shoot a movie. Yeah, and you get to hang out with your friends in Hawaii and make a movie. Um, ad hoc, they almost feel, these days. Because, like, I don't really feel like a lot of these have, like, scripts anymore. It's yeah, like, it's, let's do a dick joke here. And, it was, I think, one of the worst offenders is uh, the one where he played at Twins. And you had uh, Al Pacino. Ooh. With the, with the donuts or whatever. Duncan, uh, Duncan Jones. Dunka, 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 Chino. Like, that... Um, Jack and Jill, I believe is what it was yeah, called. That's, what it, that's the one. It is one of the worst movies I've ever watched. Oh my God. That thing was like right next to unwatchable. The saving grace of that movie was the Al Pacino part. Really? Where he plays the he plays the fucking uh, say hello to my what was it say, say hello to my special blend yes and then he does the jack like it like that part was funny and then at the end of it he's like burn this because <laughs> <laughs> he does that whole thing it's like you don't you're not used to seeing Al Pacino like this but he like totally Robert De Niro's that whole part mm-hmm. where you know super serious actor that's now doing like comedy bits and it's just that 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 blank face of his. Listen to me. Burn this. Like just and he's like, What? I, I thought there was good stuff here. He's like, No, there's nothing good about any of this. <laughs> Hide this, burn it. Um, that part was so good. Um, but the rest of the movie, straight trash. Mm-hmm. Um as a matter of fact, I'd even give that movie a zero, even though it has that one part. Ooh, see? Whereas if I was to watch it in like one part of it, I might give it a one. A zero is like z- there's zero about it. We're gonna there, have to take a small break because my son is crying. We'll be right back. About it. So whereas I think like a zero is there's nothing, nothing good about the movie whatsoever. Whereas if at least you last, if you laughed once, maybe it's a one. Okay. That said, then I'd have to give it a one. I mean, it's, it's, it's also your ratings I and mean, it could be a zero to you. But. I feel like you can have a movie that has like one part that's like really fucking funny. And then the rest of the movie is like horrible. Um, movie 43, I think was a movie that came out that was like. It's what? it's like you make you made deals and like we'll give you this amount of money but you have to do movie forty three and be in a scene or something shit like that so it was just some cobbled together piece of shit. It has to be that because like that movie was fucking terrible but they had like some really big names in it. It's like Tim and Eric awesome show. I know there are people who love watching Tim and Eric. I can't fucking stand it. Me neither. Um, there are some some things that are okay but like they got fucking Jeff Goldblum and it's like how. Mm. How did you get Jeff Goldblum? Like I don't know. I don't know. If, uh, Jeff Goldblum seems like the kind of guy if you call him up and be like, "Hey Jeff, could you come over here and hang out for a bit?" He'd be like, "I'm on my way." Yeah, but I mean, it's just <laughs> I feel like anybody that it's like Eric Andre. Like he has people come on on his show, and it's like if you just stop and watch three seconds of that show, you'd be like, "Oh, he's gonna pour fucking roaches in my lap or some crazy shit." I'm not gonna go on that show. It's like I almost feel like it's like they read something that almost sounds fucking coherent. Mm-hmm. And then they do the wacky shit in the background. Like I, I don't know. It's it just 
when I watch the episodes I have watched of the Tim and Eric, Eric, and Eric show, because I'm trying to understand what people see in it. No, I, um, I don't know. I've seen some episodes and, of just their various shit, and I, I can't stand it. Let's, so we talked about, you know, the this is the 420 episode. Mm-hmm. Like, I, used to, I was a big smoker back in my 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, and a little bit in my 30s, but, like... <laughs> I had to back way the fuck off. And it's a tiny bit in your 40s and a little bit in your 50s. Yeah, and I a mean, bit more in the 60s, and I, even more in the 70s. I like the weed. Don't get me wrong. And the second they legalize it, I'm probably going to be, you know. No, is, it legal, is it not legal here? I think it's... Because we're in the South. I think medically it's legal, but like you don't see dispensaries. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think medically you can get like a medical thing. Like if you have like Parkinson's or something like that. It's not going to be like, hey doc, my back's kind of... Kind of, yeah. kind of twingy. Can I get some weed, please? Yeah. Well, the second like the dispensary is open, they're like, "Do you have headaches? Weed." Yeah. You know, but like, since I think the South, we were like the last ones to go to Free Pour. Like we stayed many bottles forever. Uh, we were the last ones to go to Free Pour. We were so uptight about fucking tattoos for the longest time. You had to go and to we, Atlanta. And our and we still have liquor clor- stores closed on Sundays, right? Yeah, and they still have to have gigantic fucking red dots, red dots on the side of the store, for some reason here too. So like, whenever you, we talk about liquor stores in the South. They always call them red dot stores. For the longest and, and time I didn't understand that shit. I had never heard of that either. I am not. I don't drink. I don't smoke anything. I don't. I don't really do recreational drugs. And even like my medical drugs is, is pretty low at the moment. But it'll change when I get older. I'm sure. Well, you know, you've heard people say I experimented with drugs. Mm-hmm. I did a full blown investigation. <laughs> like um, I've heard stories. Yeah, I I, I delved down pretty deep uh, in that hole, but um, but I came back out of it. Made myself, made myself, met myself a, a wonderful woman. Uh, got some really good friends. Have a great kid. You know, like uh, it's, I don't regret any of it, but at the same mm-hmm. time, there's a lot of lost time there. Yeah, because I don't remember like a lot of it. I hear stories where people are like, "Oh, dude, you did this thing," and I'm like, "Okay, if you say so," because I just I don't remember. Um, but uh, we mainly wanted to kind of like touch on this one because, like I said. I did a lot of smoking. Not so much Nick, but like the movie could still be appreciated even if you don't smoke. Yeah, that's, I, I I smoked for a few years in my teens. I think I was a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I then, think then one day I was just like, nah, I'm done," and then I just stopped. Well, it's it's funny, and I, I won't I won't go off into this like huge, but like the stuff that we I was smoking in my twenties, mm-hmm. it's like was basically dog shit. Because, like, you'd get, like, a little bit of giggles and you'd get a little hungry. Yeah. But then, like, we had some friends come over one night, play D&D. And, like, we're hanging out and, like, a couple of them were, like, partaking. And I wasn't really smoking at that point because I have a job that will randomly piss test me. And having a house and food is way more important than getting high one night. Um, and I remember uh, she came over and she's, like, hitting this one little, one little tiny pipe. And this friend of mine, she weighs a buck fifteen wet. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, oh, she can, she can. She's like, you want to hit it? And I was like, she can hit it, and you know, swat <laughs> it like a big boy. I could take like a hit or two, so I took like one or two tokes off of it. We went back downstairs and played. Next thing you know, I was like, feeling all groovy and shit. <laughs> and like I was, you know, like making jokes and we were having a good time. And then my character did something fucking stupid that like wiped the entire party. And then. That's when it turned on me. I went from groovy feeling good to like fucking paranoid because it's like I felt like everyone at the table hated me because I did something <laughs> really dumb that killed everybody at the table. And then I, yeah. It, so like weed these days is fucking ridiculously strong. Mm. Um, and I just, it's not worth the heart attack because my heart was going a million miles an hour that night. I thought I was going <laughs> to fucking die. And um, I remember calling a buddy of mine because I was tweaking out. And I was like, dude, I am fucking losing my mind. I think I'm going to have a heart attack. And he was like, you would be the first person in the world i think that would die from smoking weed <laughs> he's like don't be that fucking guy lance I was don't like, do it i was like okay i'm gonna try not to they're gonna put you up on the news oh my god yeah, guy smoke he, he smoked the marijuanas just the once yeah. and he's dead stop it never do it again that's all we needed we needed that one stat to make uh reefer madness yeah. a valid movie but um but no um yeah we definitely want to talk about this movie because yeah, this is the one of the most quotable movies. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of stupid quotes to it that are, that are just enjoyable. Oh, man. Um, so the movie stars Alan Covert. Mm-hmm. Uh, he plays Alex in the movie. Um, and then fucking IMDb closed for some reason. Um, Linda, 
Linda Cardellini. Cardellini, who's um, played Velma. So she played she, Velma, and she's also Hawkeye's wife. Yeah, Hawkeye's wife, who's um, potentially Mockingbird, I think, was kind of the implication. That's I think that's Maybe. where they're going. Well, they at least so at least they've told us and this is not any research that I did, but they showed a watch that they got from the, 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 the fuck, the, spoilers. Um spoilers for everything. Yeah. Spoilers for everything. Don't watch if you want anything spoiled. <laughs> um but uh, they show a watch with um, a shield on it. A shield watch that has agent number on it, and yeah. then when you go back and you look it was, at the agent's number, it was like, Mockingbird's it's number. number. But I think yeah. Mockingbird was in Agents of Shield, which I don't know if that's technically in the. Mo- I, who knows? Is it some other universe? So even though they used Coulson, mm-hmm. who is in those, I think that Marvel has basically distanced themselves because it got really off the fucking rails mm-hmm. in later seasons. But then they pulled in the Inhumans, and they're not going to make Kamala Khan an Inhuman, which makes me kind of sad. They're going to give her, like, special bracelets, and I don't want, I don't want her to have special bracelets. I just want her to be a mutant. So, I don't want her to grow like, and be all stretchy and big, and that's fun. Because so, part, part, part of the fun about Miss Marvel is her powers look kind of stupid, but you're it's about accepting yourself in the fact that, like, I've got powers that makes my fists big and I'm stretchy. That's not the cool shit I, want, I was hoping for. I wanted to be, like, Iron Man or whatever. Yeah. I want to be Miss Marvel. I want to fly around and shoot bolts. I don't want to be slightly glowy. But yeah. now she's glowy. Now, so, I don't know. We'll, might, we'll see. I'll watch the show. That might be a red herring. Um, so there's a there's an old RPG back in the day called Champions, mm-hmm. and one of the things was how did you get your powers? And mm-hmm. it's like I was born with them, or, or they came from an artifact. And I remember there was one thing where it was like you were born with the powers, but you believe that your powers come through an artifact. Okay. And like so, I played a character that had um, bracelets that he thought gave him his powers, but like it was really in him. Mm-hmm. And like one of the things was is that someone took my fucking bracelets. So, so for two games, I couldn't use my powers. Because I believed that they came through those bracelets, That's, so uh, it it could be that maybe. Well, I guess we'll find out. Because she wants to be like well, Miss. From what I've seen, she wants to be like Miss Marvel. She wants to be Captain Marvel or Captain Marvel. Yeah. Because they they skipped over Captain or Carol Danvers' Miss Marvel phase for for these movies. Because we didn't have um, Marvel as Captain Marvel, we just went right to uh, Carol Danvers, and we skipped over um, <coughs> we skipped over Monica Monica Rambeau as Captain Marvel. We went right to a uh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. I mean, I, I think it's going to be an interesting way to introduce your character because she's basically Captain Marvel 2.0. Um, I'm curious to see to see what's going on with, with her. I, I like I like um, Kamala Khan. I feel like by the end of the season, we're pro- you're probably going to get who you want mm, and not hopefully. so. Well, it's, I, 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 we're missing in humans, which is sad. But you put one Marvel character in the show, we'll talk. We'll find we'll find a reason to talk about Marvel. Oh yeah, no, that's that's true. Um, so you, so we, we covered Alan Covert, we covered Linda Cardellini, so it had Peter Dante, who played Dante, yeah. uh, and usually running with that trio is also Nick Swartzen. Mm-hmm. So those are the guys that generally pop up in almost every single Happy, Happy Gilmore Madison, movie. Happy Madison movie. Yes. And then you can't keep Kevin Nealon out of those movies either, like that dude shows up all the time. Mm-hmm. And of course... You can't get away from fucking Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider. Yeah. He's a steepler. <laughs> I'm just steepler. Yeah. Uh, it, but I mean, honestly, I, I'm not a big Rob Schneider fan. No. And this might be his best movie. It, it, honestly, yeah. Because we, we were looking through his IMDb page to be like, is this Rob Schneider's best movie? And like up there with it was uh, Demolition Man, which is he's a movie that he's in. And we're like, I don't know. This movie might be better than Demolition Man. Do you remember the? you remember how to high five in Demolition Man? That high five, I don't think so. Yeah, but totally. Because okay. they didn't like touching yeah, yeah. germs. Um, um, but yeah, I, it's, my favorite Rob Schneider movie is Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo. That movie's fucking hilarious. If mm. you get a chance, watch it. Um, I've and, totally seen it. Don't make me see that movie. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> Damn it. But then I'd have to make you watch the first one because there's stuff that leads yeah. into that one, so I'm not going to do that to you. Um, so you had Shirley Jones, who played Grace, and then you had Shirley Knight, who played B, which was the crazy one. Yeah, and then Doris, um, mm-hmm. uh, Doris Roberts. Doris Roberts, who was, so was the grandma. grandma. Yeah. And then you had, um, Joel David Moore, who played JP. Um, now that dude, the only other thing that I had seen him in to that point was Avatar. I've, so I'd seen this movie before Avatar. So when I watched Avatar and he was in I was like, JV. Yeah, JV. Yeah. No, I wonder if he's got a robot vagina. I think we went and saw that. <laughs> he's definitely got... Um, robot whatever. legs. Yeah, robot yeah. Ears. He's definitely, definitely. Um, uh, so the movie, funny enough, had Jonah Hill in it as well. It's like his third movie? Yes. So, it was, so he was in 40-Year-Old Virgin, 
Um, he was in like two movies. He was in like a movie. I Heart Huckabees. Yeah, Forty Year Old Virgin, and then this one. Yes. Yeah. Um, so he's young. Yeah, super, super in the beginning of his career. Yeah. And he's fucking talk about a dream part, you know? Like he just basically had his face buried in a girl's tits like the yeah. entire second half of the movie. Um, it's like I, su- I sucked on my first tit, thirteen hours. <laughs> Yeah, I saw you on TV when I was watching it with my girlfriend. You mean by girlfriend the piece of, uh, what was it, uh, deer fur you rub on your dick? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so the girl who's the milkmaid was Heidi Hawking. So I looked up her career. Beautiful girl, but there wasn't a whole lot of notable stuff there. Did you, so you did IMDb research for this one, huh? I, I actually did. Wow. Like, I even looked up Kane. Like, I looked up all these people just, mm. just to see, like, who they were. But, like, um, so Alan Covert, uh, so this movie was written by Alan Covert and whoever Barry Wernick is. Um, but, like, I would love to see a second movie of this, but it's almost like The Princess Bride. It's like, it's like don't, don't do it again and don't make a continuation because, like, it was... Perfect. It's good. Yeah, we don't. We don't. I don't know if we need another one. Yeah, but like, I, I don't know. Like, I I want to see more because, fucking, Nick Swartzen's character is so good. Who wants some of the champ? <laughs> yeah. Who wants some of the gray bush? That's, yeah. yeah. Well, I like when he's he does the hype man, and then they're like we got we got this special machine. Like, if we leave him asleep, you, well, we're gonna challenge. I'm challenging you to Dance Dance Revolution. And he's like, man, I've never seen this game. How about you go first and show me how it's done? Then he like gonna gets into. <laughs> Then Nick Swartzen gets up and like crushes it. And he's like, "Oh, high, high score, high score." What does what, that what's mean? That mean? What does that mean? Is that, is that something new? Is that, is that good? good? Yeah. Did I break it, guys? Uh, that, that, the, and that's the great part is that he was doing the whole. Yeah. <laughs> and then at some point he was like looking at the clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, that part was so good. Um, yeah, the it's just everything about this movie was just fucking great. Like, um, I still. One of my favorite parts of the entire flick was uh, so. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Let's not let's not get too far off base. Which of so, course we're talking about the movie. Yes. So be, be aware. Yeah. So um, basically, the premise of the movie is a young, a thirty-ish old guy. I think he's like thirty-six or something. Who's like that. actually being played by a forty-ish guy? Um, he's working for a software developer as a tester. Yes, and um, he's also making his own little game on the side. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's, like, the fucking... He's the dude. He's, like, the video game dude yeah. um, at this place. He's, like, the... the... He says he's an old man. He's played all the video games. And he's good at all the video games. Yeah. And um, and he's got, like, his little cast of characters that, like, hang around him. You have uh, Linda Carlini, who comes in as Samantha, who's, like, basically the person that's, like, a project manager that's trying to keep them on task. Yeah. Um, like, and... We're reaching deadline. we got this shit, got to get this shit done. So she was hired in to make sure everyone reigns it in. Yeah. Then you have Dante, who's the drug dealer, the guy who's selling all the weed, mm-hmm. and then uh, JP is like the, is the everything that's making the game. Yeah, he's the child prodigy. That's like the the that's weird. Yeah, the sure. Miyazaki of like making video games, um, but like he's extremely fucking eccentric yeah. and weird because it, it, it's it, and this was, movie was like early two thousands, so he was like the Matrix. He's dressed in like the big leather cloak and. Walking around thinking like he's the the, the, the biggest shit because he kind of had um himself hyped up by like everyone saying like he made Eternal Desolate and it went on to be the biggest thing and he made it when he was sixteen or whatever so everyone just kind of since he was sixteen have just been blowing smoke up his ass. Yeah, some people need to go to high school and I made this video game by the time I was blah. Yeah, it some was... may not know things like the Civil War. <laughs> yeah. Or who was president and stuff like that. Yeah, but but I, I can do it. Yeah, it, it was it's yeah. he's super pretentious fucking. Um, Social reject because like you could tell the guy, he's just he's got such a high opinion of himself, like nobody else's opinion even, unless you have a high opinion of him too. Yeah. But like uh yeah he's like a huge fucking jerk. But man, he's like King Joffrey level jerk because you fucking hate his character. Um, but anyways, um yeah, Alan Covert in this movie, you see him as bit players and like all the other Happy Madison movies. But man, he was so fucking good in this mm-hmm. movie. Um. My favorite part of the entire movie was the first time he has to go over to Nick Swartzen's house, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Come inside and just be quiet. My roommates are sleeping." He's like, "You mean your parents?" Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, it's my fucking roommates," and he's like, "Uh, 
uh, am I sleeping over here? And he's like, no, that's my bed. And he fucking jumps in the race car bed. He's like, yours, that's your bed. It's the air mattress and it's a fucking pool alligator that you throw mm-hmm. into the fucking pool. Um, uh, but like, I love the part where he was like, um, he goes in the bathroom to relieve himself and has the Laura Croft doll. Yeah. And he's like, Laura, my cock's lost in the jungle and you got to find it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, here we go. Oh, this is it. And then the mom comes walking in. He's like, I can't stop. It feels so good. Um, that part was fucking great. And he's like, um, he's like, hey, you remember Laura? <laughs> Does the tongue thing? He's like, oh, oh God, my doll's, my my doll's, doll's a, a My doll's a whore. Um, <laughs> but there's just so many fucking awesome uh, moments in this movie. Um, but Jonah Hill's the one that surprised me the most because... I didn't know who he was when I initially watched this. Yeah. What's up? I, don't, I don't remember. I think I, at this point in time, by the time I'd seen the movie, I think I'd seen Super Bad. Mm. So I think I was familiar with him. And I'd seen 40 Year Old Virgin before I'd seen this one. So I think I'd seen him in things. Well, it's like, I think I'd even seen it accepted before this one, too. I think if you would have blinked, you would have missed him in 40 Year Old Virgin. Yeah, he was in like, was it one scene or two? It might have been technically been two scenes. He was in. He was only in the scene where he went to the store. He went to the store and he's like, "I want these boots." Yeah, I want... like, Well, you go to eBay and you buy the boots. Or you could just sell them to me. How about and... I just give you some money because I want these boots? <laughs> <laughs> you could just sell them to me because I want to go home and walk around in them. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it was like a blink and you'd miss some part, but yeah. like he was great. He was hilarious. Um, but this is one of those movies that I literally. Or figuratively, whatever the proper way of saying it is, mm-hmm. can watch every single time and laugh my ass off mm-hmm. every single time. Because um, there were so many lines that I, like me and you, were like quoting the shit out of it before we even started this video. It's, it's, it's one I've watched a bunch. And I, I noticed that, like, at, like with Shaun of the Dead, this time I watched it, I'm like, I've seen this movie way too many fucking times. That I can't sit and just be. I can't sit and just watch the movie and be engaged with it. Now I need it kind of like on and when I'm doing something else. Otherwise, I'll get bored. Yeah. Just because I know all the shit that's coming up at this point. Yeah, like there's there's no new turns. Like you don't get no. something new from this movie every time you watch no, it's it. A fucking, it's fucking stoner comedy. Um, but like uh, my one and true favorite part of this entire movie was the first time that Alex goes to his grandma's house and he's mm-hmm. like, uh, I forget the woman's name, but it's like, uh, where did she die? Did she die? Grace, did she, Grace. He was like, did she die in the bed? And it's like, no, no, she fell out of the bed and died right yeah, here on the on floor. The floor. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. And then like when the grandma comes in, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I died on the floor and nobody helped me. It's like, I'm sorry, Grace. I would have helped you if I was here. <sighs> it's cold when you're dead. It's cold when you're dead oh fuck me i can't believe this fucking happened and then she jumps up boo and he's like Bruh! like that was convincing yeah. like like I, I the the dude put so much into that movie like i laughed so fucking hard she's like i told you we're gonna have fun he's like it's fucking crazy <laughs> and then the next morning when the grandpa grandfather clock goes off and he's like beating on it like why why are you doing this to me um and i actually counted the bongs that that fucking thing went off at six o'clock yeah, of course. He got up at six. Did chores for like three hours. Chores, because he said he didn't have to be at work at three for three and a half hours. Mm-hmm. So he did chores for fucking three hours, then had a half hour to get to work. So six, seven, eight, nine, nine thirty. He has to get there at ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got to be a fucking great job. You get there at ten. But it seems like they're working at night too, because it's kind of they're taking it home with them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like they have to blast through levels, like mm-hmm. to meet deadlines and stuff, and if today's video games are any indication they're always pushing back fucking uh release dates so That's they're so fucking much. like back in the day when you were just doing like a pixel game or whatever it's hard enough to to to, to a program i suppose but you could do it with a person mm. think of all the indie games that are coming out nowadays that just have like a guy made it because have you played stardew valley no but i've heard of it i know but it's, it was done by like a dude really yeah and like right. Undertale was done by a person. Like all the music and stuff was also done by the same person. You know, that's another one I've never played, but I've heard a lot of good things. Yeah, it's skippable. I, uh, you could watch videos and, and kind of pull in enough of it because it's kind of about the story turns and kind of the weird oddities to it. So I'm a collector. I like collecting shit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and supposedly if you have Undertale, that's like a $400 game or something like that now. Oh, is that a physical card? Is that I think so. I've only, I've only ever seen it digital. Or, or maybe I'm wrong. There's like another one that was called like Earth, Earthbound. Earthbound. Or you probably think of Earthbound. So I know that's another biggie, big, big mm-hmm. that people look for. 
Um, so like whenever I go to like, uh, if I just happen through garage sales and stuff like that, I'll, I'll oh, go yeah, through. Absolutely. Um, cause if you can get that in box, I think that's, that's a big one. Cause people, people like that. Love that game. It's funny. It's like every I've single. I have never played it, but people love it. Neither. I haven't played it either, but I've heard a lot of good things. And like, that's the thing is that I don't want it for the collection, even though that would be nice, but it's like a lot of these things that apparently become like super popular. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, like, I don't know who decides that this stuff becomes popular it's because it, it, it picks up well it's like it gets around me and mm. i'd like to think that i played like a lot of the more popular stuff but i guess i'm playing more of the mainstream stuff because like i know like the gold cartridge original um n64 like zelda mm -hmm. not n64 but like uh the nes gold cartridge one yes. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah i know that's a biggie big big that i have but like i think my, my nes games are still up in maine in my old house really i think so all my shit's down the garage. Mm. I have every I have every single system down there in the really? garage. Yeah. Um, the only thing I wish I would have kept was my ColecoVision that my dad bought me back in the day. Um, but, like, I have no idea where that went. I have a feeling that was one of the ones that, like, I folded up and stuck in my toy box. And my mom was just like, trash. Yeah. I still um, I still have some of the um, Xbox and Xbox, like, 360 games that I hmm. should probably... I don't have a functioning Xbox or an Xbox 360. I don't know why I have these games anymore. I should get rid of them. But some of them I just like. There was um, a PlayStation Two game that I really liked, and I can't remember the name of it. Like Primal, I think. Did you ever play that one? She gets she gets like Van braces, and she can like turn into like different kind of like not like animals or whatever, but it would kind of be like here's the Primal version of her, and now she's stronger, and here's like the fish version of her, and now she can swim. It was kind of neat, but I still have that that on like PS Two. I'm like I don't have a PS Two anymore. I don't know why I have this. Well, I mean, <clears throat> isn't the PlayStation like one of the you can like. I think you can download like a simple driver and you can like play backwards compatible games. I don't on have it. a PlayStation anything whatsoever anymore. Like yeah. I don't have a PS5 and I'm a PS4 and I'm a PS3. None of, none of those. No. Oh. Because like my PS2 broke at some point. It eventually died. I'm like, meh, good enough. And you, then. You want to borrow my PS4? No, not really. I've got so many games on my, my Steam that I'm never going to. I have enough games that I could never finish them now. And I'm still buying more games on Steam. You called it Primal? I think it's called Primal. On PS2. Pretty sure it was PS2. Because I don't, I don't think I ever had a PS3. PS2. Yep, popped right up. Primal PS2 walkthrough. Yeah, that's the one. So I know the box art. I've not played this game. It was... I remember liking it, but I only play, ever played it the once. And I just remember because it's... Back in the day when you didn't get a, a shit ton of um, female protagonists. And she was just kind of cool. Because that's the first time I'd heard the word Vambrace. Mm -hmm. In reference to like the, her little gauntlets or whatever that she wore. And she was neat. Okay, yeah, I, I know I know the box art, but so when we talked about old PlayStation games, one that I played that I think might have gotten around a few people was Siphon Filter. That looks familiar. I don't think I've ever played that one, though. Yeah, um, it was kind of in the vein of, like, um, Metal Gear when they went, like, Sons of Liberty and stuff like that. The okay. walk around, sneak uh, Sam Fisher. Um, okay, the stealthy style games. Yeah. It's oh, a, you're, an original PlayStation. You're okay. playing a spy. But, like, the thing that was, like, unique about this game at the time was that you didn't have to kill anybody. Like, he had a stun gun. You could just go around stunning motherfuckers and just, like, go through the mission like that. And that was one of my favorite things to sneak up on people, just stun the shit out of them. Whereas um, on, on the flip side of that, there was um, PsyOps. Where you got like all these cool powers, and you could take over people and make them kill themselves. I don't think I've ever played that. That one was that one's a lot of fun. Because there was a bunch of codes to it that, like, once you beat the game, you could just go back and just put in the codes and get all the powers from the start, and it was stupid and it was kind of fun and play different characters. Like at one point in time, you get like your psycho or your telekinesis beefed up, mm -hmm. and you and this other dude are just hurling trains at each other. It's dope. That game was cool. This is on the PlayStation. Uh, I think it was Xbox. Hmm. Maybe Xbox 360. I don't remember. I'll, I'll have to look. I think I still have that game. But it's okay. PsyOps. That one was fun because you get Psycho or Pyrokinesis. You can mix fire. You get the ability to take people over eventually. And you can just kind of, I see a guy over there. I'm just going to take him over. And then you can walk walk him around and start shooting things. And, <laughs> and if you click in both th thumbsticks, you just kind of make him go to the gun. And he's fighting you. And he's like, no, no, no. And then, <laughs> the game was cool. That sounds interesting. You know, it's, this is what I'm talking about. With like, like I would think that this would be a game. That, that, that one to pick up? Yeah, it's like 850 Three dollars with shipping <laughs> to get this original PS One game. Like I would think that this would be one that like people would want to find because. I think that's just. But wasn't, look at that. Wasn't, wasn't super popular. So we get in uh, two. Three eighty. Three hundred and eighty dollars for that game, like that's to me. It's, it's yeah. What's what, what's popular? Who knows? Yeah, but and, like who makes these calls? 
Like, who decides what's fucking popular or not? Like, the thing that drives me crazy about collectibles these days is, like, I have a box of fucking Transformers. Mm -hmm. Like, G1 Transformers. And then, like, these new Transformers came out, and they're all plastic. And then, like, if you have this particular Transformer in the box, the plastic one, Mm -hmm. it's worth more than a G1 fucking Optimus Prime that's in really good condition with all of his parts. And it's like, who fucking made that call? And then for some re- and then for some reason the box like somebody somewhere down the line fooled people into thinking that it has to be in the box and the box has to be fucking pristine, and it's like, who made that call? Mm. You know, like I don't I don't get it. It's like I don't I don't buy toys for the fucking box. No, you know, you take them out of the box and you play with them, but like because of what it's become. Now you, and, can't, now you can't even do that. Yeah, now I can't do that. Like I have, I have. Just, a, let, just look at all the pop figures you have that are still in, still in their boxes. Yeah, but like that's that's all for Jack. Like one day, hopefully, Jack is going to just go downstairs and just be like, "I'm selling all of this bullshit that my dad fucking bought, and I'm going to put myself through college three times." Like that's the hope. But because I seem to have a shitty fucking like, you know, the, 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 my, the, the I, game dar. Yeah, you want my to call. fucking finger is not on the pulse. Apparently, apparently, it's all the way around and right up my ass <laughs> because like I can't figure out what people want. Like we we showed these in like the last video, like the Shaun of the Dead pops. Like I'm sure these are worth uh, a little bit, but like Freddy Funko, which is their fucking mascot. Yeah, who cares? Like, but those things Some are people going, do. Apparently, those are going for like thousands and thousands of dollars, and it's just like. Those things look terrible. I mean, to be honest, I don't like the way the Funko Pops look anyway. I like the way they're, um, I think they call them the rock candy ones. And they're, they're, they're slightly taller. Higher detail. Uh, well, they don't, they don't have like just big black dots as eyes and kind of the same exact shape heads or whatever. They, they look yeah. like, they look a bit more like the characters. Yeah, I do. And, and I like that a little bit better. Like Amber and I were having the conversation the other night where <clears throat> I've been collecting these because like some of the stuff that comes out that's popular, like things are only worth what someone is willing to pay. Yeah. But for some reason, it's like when you go and look at some of the, like the fucking um, really expensive Funko Pops, it's like Booberry mascot. Or Fruit Freak, or Captain Crunch cereal box fucking mascots. Then it's like, who wants that? Mm. Like, who is just like, I, I just I don't get it. I don't, and I think it's just it has to do with scarcity, scarce, you know, like scarcity, yeah. yeah, scarcity. Like, um, but still, it's like they fold people into being like, well, this thing is worth like sixteen thousand dollars, and it's, everyone we, just we agreed. Print, yeah, we printed three hundred of these, so they're they're rare, and yeah. because they're a Funko Pop, that's popular. It's popular just by being a Funko Pop, I yeah, guess. Things are yeah. only th- things are only worth what people are willing to pay for it, and it's like I'm not willing to pay for it, but I and I don't exactly see people chopping at the bit to own a Fruit Freak, fucking pop. But no, like, sorry, but we're you, not, we're well, not... you wonder what could be worth money? Demonic, the game in, the, in this one, which was going to be a real game, really. But I, I think it got canceled. So it had to have been something because like the level of detail in that. It was it was a game that was being made, and I guess the company went uh, went under. It was the same company that did like I think they did another game in this one or something like that. I, I looked it up. I looked it up earlier. They did another kind of popular game and they were doing demonic. Was it Froglog? I think it, they might have done that one. I don't remember. That was the Atari looking yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But they did, they did like another game and they were kind of a popular studio. But then they went under. So they were working on demonic, which is why it looked like a real fucking game. Because it was going to be a game, and unfortunately, it, it... jumping around, eating supplies, jumping around more than you. Um, <laughs> yeah, like. That that was the one thing I did take note of, like the in, so I started watching like posters in the background mm-hmm. as they were going around, <clears throat> and like they had the leisure suit Larry, mm-hmm. like nod, but I can't remember what it was called, like Happy Herman or some shit like that. But like, did you see Gay Robot? I did see Gay Robot. It was a Gundam. Yeah, and I think it's um one of Nick Swartzen's like shows or something like that. Yeah, it was a gu- it was a pink Gundam. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that I think that was the biggest thing I liked. Like you saw Soul Calibur stuff. Mm-hmm. And like they just name it ever so subtly something different. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was another game that was called Canada Must Die, or something like that. <laughs> it was like what the fuck, man. I guess that's like Russian attack, Russian attack back in the day mm. for the Nintendo. Um, but like that was another thing that I really loved about the movie. Um, uh, just the movie is just a treasure. <laughs> um, it's. Out of all the Happy Madison stuff, I would say that that's like where I feel like people need to start. Because um, I just, I know there's a lot of people who love it's, the, People love uh, Happy Gilmore and, and Billy Madison. And there's a reason people like Happy Gilmore. That's a great movie. That one's okay. I, I enjoy that one. Like Billy Madison, I'm, again, like, 
if I was to go back and rewatch it, I don't know that I'd like him anymore because it's mm. Adam Sandler being Adam Sandler, and I'm tired. Ha- 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 and, and I'm tired of that shit. Yeah. It, but back in the day, they were cool. Me rewatching them, would they still be cool? I don't know. I just. Whereas at least Grandma's mm-hmm. Boy, I mean, it's stoner humor, and I'm not a huge fan of stoner humor. I'm not like in the stoner culture. Right. And I still like it. But it's but it's that but it's movie. Also, but it's also video game culture, and but it's like cohesive and like yeah. like Doctor Shockaloo. Mm-hmm. There's a small character in that movie, but he's fucking great. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, uh, and it's just because he's he's such a wild card, and like every single time there's someone from a different culture in there, he speaks the fucking language. Oh yeah. So like, uh, yeah, you got the the. Uh, it's like, man, he's a real life Chinese person. <laughs> and the guy, yeah. and of course, Doctor Shockley speaks Mandarin. Yeah, but the bomb jinx, oh how monkey sucker punch! <laughs> like that, that whole thing was just fucking great. At every single place, like he spoke French in one area. Then yeah, like the that guy, small character. Blink and you'll. Uh, no, he's, he's there. Yeah, he's definitely there. He's, he's pretty established once they actually show it's him. Whenever, when I, once he shows up with Dante, pretty much any scene with Dante has Doctor Shockaloo hanging out somewhere. He becomes the sidekick. Yeah. Because yeah. um, he's the one that got him the lion. How did a lion get in this neighborhood? It's crazy. King of the fucking jungle. <laughs> <laughs> he shows up in the back. Um, the um, also um, so Dante was amazing in that movie yeah. um, as. Uh, Funny enough, his last name Dante. Yeah. Um, Nick Swartzen, amazing. Like, there, there's no real throwaway parts in the movie. Like, can you think of anything that? I don't know. Some of the testers might be throwaway parts. Because like the guy that challenges Nick Swartzen's character. I, mean, I don't really. He's amusing though. He's amusing, but like as as in just like super small parts that aren't necessarily big. Then you have Shilu. <laughs> guy blow. Guy blow. Yeah. Shilu and Guy blow. It's Shilu. <laughs> you think you guys are so fucking cool. <laughs> Come in here, make yeah. fun of the vegans. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we have shots of wheatgrass, but yeah, like that. It, I like David Spade. I don't really like David Spade all that much. So, because David Spade is David Spade and everything that he plays, yeah. but he's actually playing a character in this. Yeah, um, he's really good in a. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. If you haven't, have you seen that one? Which one was David Spade in that one? Oh, he was um. He was at the gay party. What yeah, was come on, guys. Yeah, like he was the dude that was dressed as the I, bunny. I, I think I, I like that movie too. Yeah, he was. I think he's branching out a little bit as he gets older. Hopefully. Um, but um, yeah, it's got all the usual casting characters that you would see in like any of the Happy Madison movies. Yeah. But like um, yeah, even you have fucking um. And they got Doris Roberts to be in this movie, which is pretty cool. So the only thing I know her from is everyone loves Raymond. Yep. I think she plays the mom. I think so. But I've never I've really never watched. Never I've never. I know it's got Brad Garrett and it's got Ray Romano in it, and then it's got Doris. Um, but like, I've never. Oh, and it's got Peter Boyle, one of the one of my favorite all time fucking actors. I love Peter Boyle. Uh, the man's amazing. Um, I, I think I remember watching like a, a commentary for, because Doris Roberts wouldn't isn't really like into stoner humor or whatever. But she like read the script and it was like a sweet story about. Like a, a grandmother and, and her grandson, and she's like, "It was a sweet, it was a sweet movie." So she ended up doing it. Well, it's and then she's just got fun parts in it too. Like I think one of my one of my favorite bits is like when the she brings out like the captain or whatever, and the guy's like, <laughs> "I can't remember how like a dude kind of insults him." And she's like, "You don't get any captain." And he hands it to this guy yeah. too. And he's like, "Sucks to be you, nerd." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wish the captain would jump off the box and come party. Maybe I'm not high enough to appreciate that thing. Well, you know what else you're not getting? The, the captain. captain. <laughs> <laughs> then hands it to the biker. Yeah. yeah. She was awesome in that movie. Yeah, she's great. If I had known you were bringing over friends, I would have trimmed my antlers. It was the it was uh, Grace who said that, but it's yeah, still yeah. that. Um, or B. Yeah. Well, B. Grace was the dead one. Oh, what are you thinking of? Um, the other lady. The woman who said you could love as many men as you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I thought that was Grace, but I think I think Grace is the um, is the dead. Is the... It's late. We're gonna fuck. I'm gonna fuck this <laughs> stuff up at least. It's late for us. But, but yeah, it, it's there. The only part I would have said that might have been a throwaway part in the movie, um, some of JP's parts are just bad. Uh, I think it's establishing this kind of like the villainous sort, or like where a guy comes into the thing and be like, "Hey, we could um, just the elves and dwarves look too similar. How about we just recolor them on the stage?" And like, that's a, it's too late. So that's a stupid idea. And then he, then he goes and presents it as his own idea. I want to buy you a cobra to go around <laughs> your neck, yeah, like. I just I hated his character. Um, uh, you're supposed to. You're supposed to, but it's like I hated him in the wrong for the wrong reasons. Mm. I, I I found the actor is fine. Yeah. But like his just you know I hate your face. <laughs> it's just like what what'd you say? And then he just does the. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like when he's standing up against the against the wall. With his How do you see me? How do you see me? <laughs> um, but like, I felt like JP was like a throwaway character. Um, no, I disagree. Uh, if there was, well, no, he, he has he has to be there. Yes. But it's like, I don't know if you've ever known that guy, but the dude who makes fucking noises when they move around and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I've known that person. Mm-hmm. Um. I went to high school with um, a, a guy, and I used to, I could not stand that dude <laughs> in high school. And I was uh, unfairly mean to that person mm-hmm. um, just because I just didn't like him. And then, because it's just, it's weird. Mm-hmm. Like to, you know, but I mean, honestly, it's not as weird now because I do it all the fucking time now. But like, I do it to myself, I don't do it out loud. Um, but um, I thought Kane served a purpose in the movie. Yeah. Who was the? Um, they got the, the uh, tester with a car. Yeah, um, like I thought, it just everyone is just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, Shirley, the crazy one, I think not Shirley. Um, the the crazy. Is that Shirley Knight? I think it's the girl with all the yeah B. Like uh, my favorite, my favorite part with her was. Uh, oh. We're gonna pause for a second and make sure that something didn't happen. Hey, sorry about that. Um, our, our external hard drive uh, decided it just didn't want to be on anymore, and it scared it's the shit we, out of yeah, us. We had to make sure we didn't lose the recording, oh, which hopefully we didn't. What was the two that we lost where we had to re-record them? Uh, we didn't lose any of them. Yeah, that's true. We totally didn't record, we record three of them because we were getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. And, and then, lose all three of them. And then we had to go back and do all three that same night. The and, next day. Yeah. It was not... Man, talk about a bummer. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we don't lose this one. But if we do, well, the last episode is here at least. We'll yeah. only lose 46 minutes of our life. <laughs> is it? Is it okay. Well, you know. <laughs> you, you're not losing any time when you're talking with friends, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no time, just a small piece of my soul. Um, but yeah, no. It, it's it's easily one of my favorites mm-hmm. uh nick swartzen's so, so fun. I, I would have woke you up if you weren't balls deep in that turtle i love my turtle like it's um i that movie makes me want to buy jack a race car bed i want to <laughs> buy him a ferrari fucking race car bed now and i want to get him the rims and a cb radio if he wants them so we can talk to other race car beds so we can talk to other race car beds um yeah um it, it's just Talk about just it's just an all around great flick. So I think we're are we going around in circles talking about how great this movie. We is are, we are, and it's it's, it's it's I'm searching for things to say. We can sit here and quote lines from it all night, but I just yeah, don't want to like just go watch the movie. Yeah, I don't want to like just keep popping off like random lines because the movie is super fucking quotable. Um, but like, if if there's one thing that we want to convince you of, it's that you need to go and just go ahead and watch this movie like right now. You might not like Adam Sandler. Guess what? He's not in it. He's not in the movie. Yeah. So, um, which I mean, for how much we say, like, I'm tired of Adam Sandler. I still like this movie because his, I guess I don't know his if his feelers are on it because I think the, uh, the I'm um, they're not the, you're a hooker. I think that was a his that was a him line. Really? I think so. Huh. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, just well, I mean, we might as well go ahead and quote that part because that was a great part. The, um, yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, addicts. Uh, you not pay me rent for six months, so I have to kick you out now. Every month I give hundreds of dollars to uh, the roommate, and he gives it to you. I'm sorry, but I love them so much. It's like you love who? The girls at Madame Kamei's massage palace. Aren't they hookers? They're not hookers. They're massage therapists. And they also massage your junk for money. I think there's a word for that, and it's hooker. You're a hooker. <laughs> and that that dude's not in the movie anymore after that, except for like a part in the end. Oh, the the the, oh, the roommate. I just don't remember him coming back. At the very end, when they're at the party, he does the "I love Madame Kamez," like almost oh, like JP, like a robot. I don't think I remember that one. Um, yeah, he has like that little tiny bit part at the end of the movie, but like that's that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like that that whole opening scene where it's like. It's like Mike Tyson's fighting a baby, and he's just beating the shit out of him at this fucking game. And then uh, he unplugs the controller and like beats the shit out of him. He's like, yeah, oh. he's taking a rip from the bong. Or yeah, um, but like that's another dude who's shown up in a lot of Happy Madison movies. But like, I couldn't if if you held a gun in my face right now and said name one of the characters. Honestly, I've not I've not seen a whole bunch of his movies, especially like lately. Like when Netflix just bought a shit ton of uh, Adam Sandler movies, and I'm like, I I know what movies to pass on immediately. When he did like the 
the magnificent seven or whatever the hell it was. Or the and, awful eight or some yeah, stupid the, shit like the, that. The play on that one might skip a ball. Jack and Jill skipped that one. Um, basically, if it's a new Adam Sandler movie, I've just skipped it. Yeah, I I haven't watched any of the new stuff, but um, one of my wife's favorite movies is Fifty First Dates. Yeah, that's that's a good one. And I do like it too. It, it's a good one. Um, and I think that one has Rob Schneider in it too. Doesn't he play like a fine guy? He plays his sidekick. He's mm-hmm. like the yeah. He's like the guy that has like the dead eye. Mm-hmm. Um, that has all the kids. And it's like, do you have a? Where he falls to the boat. And he's like, do you have a cat? Because I think I can feel something licking my foot. <laughs> <laughs> but like he's 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 actually really good in that movie. Um, but like Drew Barrymore, like she's. I mean, she's so fucking adorable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now I don't want to sit here and just like quote all the stuff. Yeah, so I, th- I think we, I think we got the the breadth of the movie, and then also some video game talk in there. Yeah, yeah, no, we totally got some video game talk in there. I, I want to talk more about video games. We need to do like video games. Talk about video games. Although I'm, most of the games I play, I, I I play games a lot. I don't play a lot of games. I might have to start. I might have to actually force my PS4 on you so we can like actually play some of the mm. same shit. That's how I, I play stuff on my Steam. And I don't really, because I've got an Xbox One, and I bought it to play with my brother. Mm. Mm. So now, I, now it's a, now it is a H- HBO Max and and Disney Plus and Twitch machine, and that's all I do use it for. Because anything I want to play with a controller, my my computer has a controller. Well, we need to. I mean, there's that market there for people who mm. like. I mean, shit. There's people who just sit there and play video games and talk about it, and make fucking hundreds and. Hundreds of. I mean, I've, I've I've streamed and stuff before too. Hundreds of my, nickels if, a day. If my internet was better, I'd probably stream all the time. Because who the fuck doesn't want to just sit down and play a game and maybe talk to some people? Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Um, shit, I just I was thinking about opening an OnlyFans page and just like basically just pour whipped cream on my fucking feet. <laughs> I don't have to show my face and just call myself L Dog or some shit, shit like that. And nobody would have to know it was me until. Call, call it a Ballastar's uh, Rod of Manhandling. Yeah, they're man pleasing. Man pleasing, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's. That's a, a joke for Tim, on all, uh, Tim and Amber. These are these are all jokes. Um, but, yeah, the it, it's just, it's funny, like, the things you can, like, uh, make money doing these days. Mm-hmm. And, like, a, a buddy of mine at work, he was like, I know that you're not driving Uber or anything like that, and you're working, like, these side jobs and everything to, like, pay the bills. He was like, have you ever thought about opening an, an, an OnlyFans page? And I was like, what the fuck would I do on an OnlyFans page? And he's like, I don't know, like, you know, hit yourself in the testicle with things. That was like, who wants to watch that? He'd like, dude, you'd be surprised. Yeah. I was you, like, pro- mm. you, you probably would make money, but what, would, what the fuck would you do to yourself? Well, it's just, it's also just... Smacking your junk with a... Well, so the only thing I'm willing to do is, like, you know, show my feet, but never my face. But there's going to be that one day where, like, I'm literally at work, so you like... Take, you take off your shoes. Yeah. Like, Man, I think I stepped on, like, some glass. Yeah, I have to scratch the top of my foot, and someone's like, I know that fucking freckle. And then... God damn it. Yeah, next thing you know, I'm the fucking foot bandit 32. But, like, I, I just... I, I which, don't want to do that. Which I've heard of some people who have been, like... They have an OnlyFans page, and then, like... They're going to college or whatever, and then someone on campus recognizes them, and now it's fucking weird. I, everyone's fucking doing it. Like, I, it's like yeah, everyone. It's fucking, why not? What the fuck not? Yeah, like everybody and their mother has a podcast now, so it's like I don't understand why it's weird. Yeah, um, it's like fucking take take pictures of whatever you want and show it to people. If people are gonna pay you for pictures. Ever do it? If you if you're not into the thing that this person's doing, it's like don't make it weird for everybody else just because yeah. it's weird for you. But um. But yeah, no, that's why we're trying to make that YouTube money. And if I have to put whipped cream on my feet on these fucking videos to like... Don't worry, I'll stop him. I'll smack the cream out of his hand. It's going to be like, okay, Nick. <laughs> I'm just going to be like, no. Can I just do whippets for the rest of the video then? No. Do you know what whippets are? Uh, it's sniffing the whipped cream thing, isn't it? It's the gas. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically laughing gas. Yeah, it's just taking the, the pressure gas or whatever the fuck. The, it keeps the can. It's still legal in stores. It's just they put a bitterant in it now. Mm. Oh. Well, let's see. They put a bitterant on um, the Switch cartridges, too. And all that did was make people taste them. <laughs> yeah. There, there, we went to go see, um, I think it was when I worked at Hops. Uh, I had a manager there that was, like, really into, like, cartoon tuning and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think it was ACDC. I can't remember who it was, but somebody went to, like, Charlotte. And me and, like, two other dudes, we jumped in a car and went to go see ACDC, and this dude had a gigantic fucking tank of laughing gas that I guess is used for, like, nitrous, like, boosting cars and stuff like that. And he threw it in the fucking truck of his car, and all the way up there, we had a hose running up the front of the car where we are just basically doing whippets the entire time. And I, like, 
I didn't realize how fucking weird that was until I saw the video of Steve-O doing all the fucking crackers, the, the whippets, because mm-hmm. that's the one thing that he was doing. And, like, I remember I, I was so high on that stuff. I remember being in the parking lot and was doing the whippets. And then, like, I passed out. And next thing you know, I, like, woke up and I'm laying on the ground. And they're, like, leaning over and they're, like, are you okay? And I was, like, what the fuck happened? And they're, like, you passed out. I was, like, that could happen? They're, like, yeah. When there's more whippet in your body than air, <laughs> usually you pass out. And I was, like, oh, okay. Good to know. Good. To get. I didn't know. But, um, but yeah, it's just. Um, I have no idea why I went off that tangent. It's Happy 420. Yeah, 420. There 420. You go. But, all right, so go watch the movie. Yes, it's a good movie. All right, so. Um... <laughs> I'm so tired. Apparently. Mm, so. All right, so I think, we're, I think we're, we've got everything we want about Grandma's Boy. Good movie. Watch it. I mean, it's a stoner humor, but you don't have to be in a stoner humor to necessarily watch it. I mean, if you fucking hate weed, what? Then you probably aren't gonna like this movie. But. No, like, yeah, if you're if you're a big like anti drug person, then yeah, this movie's not going to land with you. But um, whereas at least at least it's weed, and weed is like the least offensive drug in my opinion. Yeah, I find weed less offensive than alcohol. It's made. It's grown in nature. Like, uh, why why is a plant illegal? I I don't get it. Well, I mean, then the byproducts. Cy- cyanide's of- natural. Is it though? I think so. Uh, no there, there's awful shit you can put in your body that's... Cause I mean, I think cyanide's in uh, apple seeds. Anything. Anything that you put in your body. You could fucking die from water. Like drinking water. Mm-hmm. You know, like anything that you put in heavy amounts in your body can fucking kill you. But, like, this grows naturally. It's a fucking plant. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Like, you could pick it's, it straight off the bush and smoke it and get high. It's much better than, it's much better than alcohol, in my opinion. Yeah. But, like, oh, God, yes. Like, people don't you know drive high and like kill people yeah. like if you drive high the worst thing you do is like stop 50 feet away from the fucking light while it's still green i think there's like some Chappelle jokes about like driving while high and stuff like that too yeah it's it's it, it's fine yeah no you're you're good like i don't people don't kill people like from from smoking weed oh well, by fine i mean don't do it anyway but still well, you know the government, the government hasn't figured out a way to tax people growing weed in their own backyard and that's the, the reason why it's not legal yet but um in most places, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. I mean, I think I have family who grow their own stuff, but they live in different states. Well, I've got a buddy of mine, I think he lives in Virginia, and he was like, I'm growing five plants in my backyard right now. And it's like, so it's like you could have so many plants and so much weight mm-hmm. that you could grow yourself. And like, they can get crazy with the strains, which is funny because like the only thing I ever knew back in the day was like the dirt weed that we smoked. And now apparently it's like you can make the it's like the in the movie you get the Frankenstein, yeah, the Frankenstein and, and the, the bomber and the fucking bling bling and, and the, you know the, and the Bubba Kush like there's it there's it's so it's 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 a culture that I'm not a part of and I have no interest in being a part of. I'm not a part of it either, but like um, and now apparently there's wax and like all this other shit like mm-hmm. there's all this other stuff that you could do with it now and it's just I feel like fucking Homer Simpson's dad. I feel like Abe Simpson. Back in the day, oh, I knew you, what you walk, it you was. Walk, you walk in, put on your hat, and then see the thing, well, and turn, do the turn around, pick it up, and leave. Well, it's the whole thing. Back in the day, I knew what it was, and now it isn't it anymore, mm. and what it is is strange to me. Yeah. And one day, it'll be strange to you. Like that it's whole. Like I'll never be like you. Yeah. yeah. Like that's that's literally where I'm at now. Because like honestly. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm old man too. I'm not. I'm only like. I'm nearly 40, but still, when people are like, "Hey, check out this TikTok," even you like scroll through TikTok. I'm like, "What are you doing? You're you're old. It's fun." Stop like, looking at their TikTok. It's all I like the TikToks. They're good. Like, uh, there's a lot of cute kids there. Um, you might want context on that, there, buddy. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know what you mean. Yeah, like the so yeah, like Jack likes watching the babies. Yes. Um. So like we watch some of those, and then um some of the challenges are cute, but like the Tide Pod shit, I don't get. No. Um. And I think was, there's was a, Tide Pod even TikTok. I don't know. I think it was before it. it all I know is that. People have taken that shit too far, and I think they're just intentionally trolling people to see if people will hurt themselves. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, so. kind of like when you had Vine and stuff, too, where some of the stuff is fine, some of the stuff is stupid. Like the cinnamon challenge, they like, you can, you can hurt yourself doing the cinnamon challenge. That is hilarious. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like watching people get fucking hurt. I and love... That's, and that's why you like Jackass, and you're like, or Jazz, Jackass, and you're like, hey, do you want to watch this? And I'm like, well, fuck no. Anything where someone gets hurt, I don't, I don't, just don't enjoy it. I, Call it empathetic or whatever the fuck it is, but when I see someone hurt themselves, I can like feel it. Yeah, that... like you watch someone fall on their uh, skateboard and take it right to the right right gooch. to the gooch, and like, yeah. I'm like, nope. 
You no, uh, skateboard stuff I don't like watching. And the only thing I've ever felt from a Jackass movie was the fish hook. Uh, the mm. shark fish hook through the cheek. And that was the worst thing I'd seen. Um, um, but yeah, it's... And I'll just go ahead and give you my rating of Jackass Forever right now. Because I know we're never going to do that video. It was good. But it wasn't better than, like, say, Jackass 1 or 2. Um, but, like, they have a really touching um, tribute to Ryan Dunn at the end of it. And that was really good. Um but yeah, I think we're done talking yeah. about this. Um, which this one's coming out on 420, which is I don't even know what day it is. So keep, I guess keep it tuned because we put out stuff every Monday and then occasionally we'll throw something special up. And we're going to try and get a little more dialed in. Like for most people, I think they've already figured out they watch the first 15 minutes of our fucking videos and they kind of get what we're going for. And then the rest of it is usually uh, you staring at me going, okay, wrap it up and me fucking rambling um, because it's late <laughs> and I'm really tired. But yeah. Um, if we haven't convinced you to watch the movie by now, you're not going to go out and watch it. But yeah, um, yeah it's, I it's, it's I think it's worth a watch. It's worth your time. All right. Um, anything in the comments below? I guess give us um, give us some video games. Like give us some old video games that you're like you're into and you thought would take off, but they didn't for some reason. Turok. Yeah, that was one of those ones that was kind of like kind of popular, and I like tried to like, but for some reason I just like it's a game where you're fighting dinosaurs. Why don't I like this game more? So, I mean. I feel like Turok was like the grandfather of Horizon. You think so? Yeah, I fucking love Horizon. Yeah, I'm best meant... PlayStation game ever. I wouldn't know. I've, I've not played it. I've not played other PlayStation. Uh, that's why games. I'm gonna force my fucking PlayStation Four <laughs> into your hands so you can play it. I'm probably gonna like Last of Us more just to piss you off. I liked Last of Us. It was a good game. I'm team. I'm team uh, Abby all the way. Anybody that does not like Abby, like seriously, get over yourself. Like that's never play it. I have no, I have no strong opinion. It's, it's. I don't. I, I'm, I'm familiar with the controversy. Uh, I don't I, know I don't. why there's a strong opinion. It's like you could like things, you could like new things. Well, I think it, it, it comes to the part like imagine like who's like your favorite character in Last of Us? Just in fiction, like imagine imagine you're playing like Horizon Zero Dawn and you're like, man, Alloy's great, and then Horizon Three comes out and Alloy gets killed off in like the first like 20 minutes by someone that you just fucking despise like they introduce this new character and like i hate this new character and then she just gigs alloy and now she's the new main character i mean would you be like gung-ho about this new character i can't answer that i see what you're going for but, but i can't more, answer that because joel is a detestable character yes but it's it's kind of like that he did what he had to in order to protect. Oh no! And then and then I understand he, it. Oh yeah, I understand why he did what he did. But it's like he he is not a good person. Yeah, but then you but you you form a connection with a character in a game, and the next game you're them at the beginning, but then they get replaced by someone else, and, and that that person kills your favorite character. And I could see why people would be pissed about that. But but still, it's like you. We live in a day and age where people fucking scream about like subverting my expectations, but do it in the right way. And that game did it perfectly, <laughs> perfectly. It was a it was a brilliant fucking turn, and people didn't like it because it was very violent, it was very fucking sudden, and it was very traumatic. Mm -hmm. But like that's what Naughty Dog fucking does, and like. I thought it was just an amazing turn, and especially how they hearkened back to how you got to where you were. Mm -hmm. Dude, it was one of the best fucking turns in video games ever. Mm -hmm. And, like, the biggest thing that people had against Abby's character is she doesn't look like a girl looks. And it's like, have you yeah, not that, seen, yeah, like, Ronda Rousey or, like, some of these... Like, the chick who played, um... Um, Cardoon. Yeah, Cardoon. Like, yeah. The, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that, that aspect of it is stupid, but I don't think that was a majority majority of the voices. I think those are the voices that get amplified to therefore discredit the entire side. Yeah, People don't like Abby, so they take the shit opinions, rocket those to the top and say, like, well, that's what these people think. And then, therefore, you discredit the entire side by hoisting up the, sh the shit opinion. Yeah, the, the worst part of the fucking yeah. argument. And and it's it, kind of like us not liking Ray. People would be like, you just don't like Chris, she's a woman. And then they'll hoist that opinion up and excuse, dis, dismiss your opinion because of the, sh the shit opinions. That's, I mean, it's... It, it's, it's what everyone tries to do nowadays for, for everything. Like, I, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll hoist up the good opinion and say, like, this is good because of this and ignore the effect. It, it's, it's just... Pe trolls. Pe yeah, just, yeah, trolls yeah. are fucking winning today. And it's just, it, it, it upsets me because, like... It's, it's, I think it's kind of lazy reviewing to some point in time. 
But like that game, like I'd love to do a, a review of that game because like it was so fucking good. Mm -hmm. Because like you go through a part of Abbey where like you're playing with the fucking dogs. Like they have dogs that they're training and stuff like that. And then later on you go to another area of the game where you're like the other you're you're playing um um not Abby, um Ellie. Ellie. And you go through an area and you hear a fucking dog barking and you're like, Oh no. Oh please! The dog, and then, like, yeah. the dog that you're playing with in like an earlier chapter, you have to fucking ice it, <laughs> and like you feel so bad doing it. But like you're, I love that you're getting both sides of the fucking story, and like they're both sides are very compelling. It was, I know a lot of people don't like the fucking and Last of Us too, and I know it's probably going to turn a lot of people off from me saying it. But like that game was fucking great. <laughs> um, Abby's character, completely understandable why she did what she did. I don't know as much about that one. Like I've, it's kind of hard to have to just be on to be into video games and on like YouTube and stuff like that, and not just pick up some of it through osmosis. So I know the ending of, of like The Last of Us, and the kind of the things that you would do, and I think I was even like um, Matt Coville kind of like talking about um, D and D and stuff, talking about playing like in character versus whatever, mm -hmm. and kind of playing yourself. And whatever, whatever else, because he was talking about his friend who's like, I did that last mission and I didn't kill anybody. And then Matt Colville was like, well, I killed everyone and because that's what Joel would have done. Mm. And, and that's kind of the difference between how do you play games? Do you play it because you're playing that character and you're trying to get into that different mindset? Or are you just playing it for yourself and just doing what you would want to do? No. You're... And, and I kind of picked up that whole thing just from that. And I'm like, that's that's really interesting. It's kind of the. Joel would do it, so that's why I did it. The funny part was is that, like, <clears throat> when I played that initially, like, I just popped that dude right in the head. Mm -hmm. Because, like, that's the thing I loved about the games was that they were very good about giving you point of view. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, you are in the shit where, like, the girl disappears and you want to get her back. Like, they were very good about showing you his motivations. They were really good about fucking tugging your heartstrings at the beginning of the game. Mm hmm <clears throat> and I get it. People who like Joel's character, now that I'm a father, honestly, if they were like Jackson is like the fucking he'll he'll cure he'll cure the fucking world with like this thing, but we, but have, we to have to kill, to kill him to do it. Yeah. I'd probably make the same fucking decisions. Yeah, and it's 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 one of those things where you can understand it. It's not the right decision, but it's the right decision for him. But the thing is, is that no one in this world of hard choices are good people. No. Like, everybody has had to do some fucking terrible shit. So you're not going to get away clean with the perfect fucking... Yeah, it, it's never like, here's the here's the right decision. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah that's absolutely the right decision. Yeah. It's the decision where everyone when everyone wins out. It's kind yeah. of, you got the, the shit decision that's probably going to do the greatest good. But to one person... Or two people, maybe it'll it'll do it'll be fucking evil. Yeah, well, I mean, they give you like outs, like when you're going through the game and you're running towards like people that are in like these little areas, mm -hmm. and like you're killing these people to like get through these places. But like they give you the out of oh, they're, well, they're cannibals, or they're like eating people, or they're you know jacking people yeah. and taking their stuff. But it's like that is the world that they've established. This is what you have to do to fucking get by because like canned goods. Crops, all this stuff like that. Like these people aren't fucking farmers, yeah, you and can't like really, yeah. no one's making canned goods at these points. So like you get desperate, um, and I think that's what I most like about the game is that you feel the fucking desperation as you're going through it. But like, not so much with Ellie, not mm -hmm. so much with Joel. Like those those people are like well equipped, and then the decisions you have to make are like life and death at the spur of a fucking moment. I think they're usually like quick time events. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to decide to fucking do it, and if you don't. You die, and then you have to go back and fucking do it again. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, no, that's neither here nor there. But like Amber and I, this household were team fucking Abby all the way because like it was completely understandable why she did what she did. I'll, I'll, I'll play the games one at some point in time. Just come, I want, I want. It seems like a good story now, and I kind of want to experience it, despite the fact that I kind of know a lot of the terms already. It's. I still think it would be unique. Like, I'll go get you the fucking PlayStation right now. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna play it. Because I have it remastered on that PlayStation, and mm -hmm. then we have the second one like right over there. And I know me, I'd go home and it'd sit somewhere because I'm playing other shit at this point in time. Mm. I've been playing Baldur's Gate three. That's gonna occupy occupy my time for for months. Oh, there you maybe. go. That's one I'm interested in playing. That's one we can do a review of when they finally fucking release it in 2023, probably. Yeah. So far, the the game. Well, eh, so. We'll talk about it in our own time. I think we've we've uh, we've jammed video games into uh, into this particular uh, 
moving Grandma's Boy because they were game testers and like, here's a reason. Here's a reason. I'm so I'm 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 not I'm not very good at this, am I, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> if if this was points for how much we talked about Grandma's Boy, I think we're we're batting like a forty three. Or forty or fifty percent. <laughs> yeah, like a three. Yeah, but um, it, I feel like some of these reviews should be like Nick and Lance talk about Grandma's Boy, and like the first ten no, minutes so. of it is us going, Grandma's Boy, great movie. Okay, so so now that we're done with that, yeah. Like, so what have you been doing this week? I think um, we I think we put that in the title for uh for um Grumpy Old Man because we talked about Grumpy Old Man a little bit, and then we got way off track, and then at one point in time in the video we're like we're done talking about this movie, and we're just going to talk about whatever the fuck we want to for the rest of it. Okay, so if you want to help me get past the inanities of this. You need to come over a little earlier. Can I, can I do this? No. Okay, you can't do that. But <laughs> stop it. Um, but like, you need to come over a little earlier so you, me, you, and I can just like chit chat for like 30, 45 minutes before yeah. the video because then you know, like, I want to talk about everything once we get going. That's but right. you know, gotta wait till the, the baby's in bed. I know. And that's like eight thirty. So now it's uh, late here. Yeah. It's the next day here. Yeah, we're running up at twelve forty one. Yeah. So if you ever wonder about, like, man, it's really, it's really dark here. It's why we kind of no natural light because it's a uh, it's midnight outside. I wasn't supposed to say this, but like Nick watched um, uh, Indestructible, um, Invincible. Invincible, Invincible. Nick watched Invincible. We're gonna be doing an Invincible thing. We were gonna do the recording tonight, but it's it's pro it's probably the the Invincible video is probably already out. Yeah, most this, likely. This is, the, this is the 20th. We'll probably have it out beforehand. But it was kind of like one of those things. I, I, I watched it, and I'm not telling him shit. And it's bugging him. Yeah, it really is. It's bothering the shit out and of he's me. He's like, just let me know like what it is. I'm like, mm, too bad. Well, I know enough about you like where you were like, I was watching Gargoyles, and I'd watch like an episode a day. Mm -hmm. And that's like your favorite cartoon. Mm -hmm. But then like Invincible, you were like, I watched three episodes, and then I watched three episodes, and then I watched the last four. But Gargoyles is episodic. I can walk, watch one episode, and it's done. Invincible is... One story, and it's kind of like, man, you watched you watch you watched the movie all in one day. I can't believe you watched one movie all I in one day. I still feel like that's telling, like, because I know you. You can watch a little something and then you can step away from it. Like the fact that you watched three episodes and three episodes. No, I can't. Okay, well, it's, all I'm trying to say is, talk to me about the fucking thing now, nope. please. Nope. <laughs> all right. So thank you for joining us for Grandma's Boy, and um, special house like us going off on tangents. It's extra. You get extra of us going off on tangents, and look at him. He's so angry. If you do, if, it, if, if us going off on tangents bothers you, like, literally watch the first 20 minutes of the video, and then <laughs> cut it off. Because, like, you know, we don't want to give you everything. But, like, we, we want we, we want to whet your fucking appetite. Yeah, it's, but... I've, I've watched YouTube videos where people just tell you the plot of the movie, and that's not fun. No. And, and, and yeah, it's, it's just, we don't live the movie through us. Just go out. Like, there's so many different ways you can watch these movies for free if you can't afford them. Um, cause most of these movies I watch for free. For free if you can afford them? No. Or if you can afford them. There's a way to watch them for free if you can't afford them. If you can't afford them. Yeah. Okay. Cause like all the, all of these movies, I literally watch the movies one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So like there's, there's ways to go see it. Movies one, two, three dot AC. Um, you have to deal with a lot of pop-ups, but mm -hmm. I am not endorsing pirate sites. If there's a movie that you like, fucking support it. Almost every movie that we've talked about on this channel, we have bought on DVD. Yeah, um, or on like YouTube because it's been a couple, or rented. Some of them I've rented too. Yeah, like Run Roller Run was a rent. Yeah. Um, Arrival, The Arrival was a rent. Yeah, we got that one. On, I think Amazon. I think you watched it on Amazon, and then like by the time you you told me to watch it, it was no longer on Amazon, and I had to rent it myself. Mm. But I got two viewings out of it, so. Yeah, the, but like it, it's the, don't think that I'm endorsing like just straight up like piracy. If you if there's something that you like out there, put money into it because that will give in people incentive to make more of it. If there's yes. no money to be made, then they don't make shit. Yeah. So like I'm if, not if if you, if you watch a thing and you like it, give them money, please. Yes, definitely. Like Horizon Zero Dawn, I supported every single one of those. And there was a time back in the day where I would torrent games, mm -hmm. and like if it was a shitty game. I wouldn't play it, and I would just delete it from the computer. If it was a good game, I would play it for it's, a bit, then like, I would delete it from the computer and just go out and buy the fucking game. Once a day, we, or once once upon a time, we had demos, and you could play a game and just go like, "I don't want to spend money on this," or like, "I do want to spend money on this," but now that's not really a thing. Well, there is a rip 
like for a while there, like MMOs, mm -hmm. where they were making like a new MMO. It seemed like every like three of them came out a year or four of them came out a year, and like nothing touched World of Warcraft because that was like the king of the fucking hill. It's even Conan, um, whatever it, the subtitle they gave to it was going to come and kill WoW, and yeah. it pulled people away for like a couple months, and then Conan, yeah. City of Heroes, City of Villains. Um, but okay, my son's crying, so we're wrapping this one up. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Bye.